old man, take a look at your life, and thank God I'm nothing like you. Greetings, and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Welcome, everyone. <sighs> Here is yet another example of my number one rule of fame and celebrity. You know, the... But I have to say that this is probably a first when it comes down to cancel culture, if you want to call it that. Censorship, etc. Because at the end of the story, well, I'll get to that. Once again, here's an old, almost dead rocker. Protest singer. He's, singing a protest song. He's 75, giving an ultimatum for a company to make a choice on something that is literally not under his control. He has no control over his own music anymore. I'll tell you. Whenever you sign a contract to be a part of these big music and movie corporations, they own you. And now they own his music, too. I'll bet that this is just a stunt to get attention to his music after all these years. What do you want to bet? That he's getting ready to either go on tour or drop another album. I mean, come on. A lot of folks will coattail on someone that's really, really big right now in order to get a taste of that fame and um, fortune for themselves if they can. I mean, those that are being coattailed are usually very, very successful and you either got people that are all for them or bashing the hell out of them. Both of them make money, unfortunately. But it's not like we've never seen anyone do this before. Trump, 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 President Trump, oh, President Trump, Trump, President Trump, Donald Trump. Before I get into all that though, please give me a like, a share, a subscribe, uh, a comment. You need to be doing that on my live call and talk show anyway, so you might as well get used to it on the, in the comments down below. Also, a uh, donation would be the ultimate. All my links are below. Please click on some of them, will you? That's also where you can find other platforms to uh, follow me on. In case I get kicked off of YouTube, which is inevitable, they just kicked off Sticks, Hex, and Hammer. Anyway, also don't forget about the live call in talk show, Talk to Me America, where the world wants to hear what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central, 5 o'clock avocado time, which is also Pacific time for those of you that don't know who Salty Cracker is. I'll see you on Thursdays. Now back to the video. Hmm. His music or Joe Rogan's podcast, in which Spotify probably have hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions vested in him. And they're going to give old Neil to the establishment young, who almost nobody remembers, even the time of day. I actually don't see that happening. Do you? We'll go on. Now, who out there didn't need any articles or Twitter or talking heads to tell them this was going to happen? Especially after seeing this chart. Well, we all knew the answer to this one before Neil to the establishment young deleted his letter to staff instructing them to bully Spotify about Joe Rogan's misinformation? How the hell is it misinformation when you're describing what you did for yourself to accomplish, well, anything for that matter? And my usual question, of course, to these people who think they are powerfully relevant, who died and left you in charge of what can be played on Spotify and who can listen? Also, when did you become an expert on misinformation? 
I suppose now the sports equipment companies that don't sponsor Joe Rogan are going to try and cancel him and the ones that do sponsor him next? Oh wait. Let's not give them any ideas here. I promise that I don't think this way because I am this way. I think this way because I know that others do, and forewarned is forearmed, especially in a battle of wits. But uh, don't get me distracted. Now, this news story has been all over everything, as if we were watching what happens next in a war scene or something. But I decided to use the Daily Beast this time, just to see how they framed all of this. So let's read their article. And then I will tell you the outcome of all of this. Uh, what I like to call or think of as a publicity stunt, which actually it is. So you see the Daily Beast here. Very upset. Neil Young wants his music off Spotify over Joe Rogan Vax Misinfo. Now, the, 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 the headline of this itself is true and not true. <laughs> yeah, very upset Neil Young. Although, how upset was he? Really? He gave, he, and he actually, he gave a, a, uh, an ultimatum. He wants his music off of Spotify over Joe Rogan. No, he basically told them it's either me or the, or him. And Vax Misinfo? Okay. Again, when did you become an expert on this, you old man, you? <laughs> I want to let Spotify know immediately, today, all in caps, man, he's serious, that I want all of my music off of their platform. They can have Rogan or Young, not both. This came up in, uh, this is the one on January 25th, as of this recording is the 27th. So this is two days ago. This has been the huge story for the last at least two to three days now. And of course, well, I'll tell you the outcome. He's seen the needle and the damage done. What a great uh, um, segue to one of his songs. Anybody can do it, though. As you noticed, I uh, did it at the very beginning of this video. <laughs> Decidedly not a friend of the pod, legendary music star Neil Young, legendary, has asked his team to pull his music off Spotify in response to the fake information about vaccines being spread on the streaming platform. Hmm, he's not worried about any other falsehoods on Spotify. Joe Rogan is his only problem. Methinks thou protest too much. In an open letter to his team, published Monday, and of course deleted the same day I've heard, Young singled out podcast the Joe Rogan experience as a linchpin of mis misinformation about vaccines. I want you to let Spotify know immediately today that I want all my music off their platform, he wrote, according to Rolling Stone. They can have Rogan or Young, but not both. Way to stand up for... What was it again? <laughs> Young's manager, Frank Gio... Uh, Giro, Gironda, no, Gironda, 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 sorry if I mispronounced it, confirmed to the Daily Beast that the Heart of Gold singer had published the letter on Monday. It's something that's really important to Neil. He's very upset about this dis disinformation. He's, he's very upset about this disinformation. Really? Tell me something. Does he even listen to Joe Rogan? Geronda explained that Young had sent him the letter addressed to him and Tom Carson, a top executive at Warner Records. Yeah, there you have it. Geronda said he and the singer-songwriter had spoken about it. We're trying to figure this out right now, he added. So, they're down with it, but they're still trying to figure it out. Please, 
this is this right here sounds like nothing but an advertisement for this man's music because I've heard nothing but I, I've read so far four different song titles in the the pros here. They're pushing this guy. They're pushing him. The letter was posted to the Neil Young archives on Monday afternoon, but the link was broken as of this writing. Yeah, they deleted it after a bunch of backlash. Hironda said he wasn't sure about why the letter might be down. Yeah, of course, they're not going to tell you the truth. <laughs> Again, this literally sounds like some kind of a publicity stunt to get Neil Young's name back out there. Listen to, listen to this. And like I say, I think this is one of the reasons why I used uh, this particular paper, the Daily Beast, because they go for this shit. They literally always go for this shit. And I also know when it comes to my experience and my college in communications, which is nothing but learning how to adver advertise to people uh, effectively, News stories like this with all of the buzzwords in it and all of the song titles in it are always some kind of editorial to push this person on them, to get people to notice this person again. Again, I guarantee you this guy's either getting ready to drop an album again or he's getting ready to go on tour, which at 75, more power to you if you can do it. I'm not going to support you. The Joe Rogan Experience is the world's most popular podcast and huge cash cow for Spotify. Well, at least they realized that. Which acquired its exclusive streaming rights in 2020 in a multi-year deal with Rogan reportedly worth over $100 million. So, you think that they're going to give up this $100 million or more cash cow of Joe Rogan after I showed you that chart? You think they're even going to talk to this guy? How delusional are you, Mr. Young? A typical episode of the podcast billed as a long-form conversation can average as many as 11 million listeners and often runs over three hours in length. One such episode was a December release with the guest Dr. Robert Malone, an anti-vaccine virologist. He's not anti-vaccine. <laughs> He's anti-this vaccine because they've used his uh, discovery to hurt people, according to him. According to him, allegedly, okay? Malone used Rogan's platform to propagate a number of baseless claims, bizarrely blaming mass formation psychosis for people's disbelief in vaccines as a tool to prevent severe illness and death. Oh, forget about anybody's experiences forget about anybody's history it's just uh a uh, it, it's just a uh, uh debunked uh phrase as far as they're concerned which actually to be honest with you they've claimed it debunked it and claimed it again so yeah malone told the comedian that a third of the population is basically being hypnotized into believing medical information from top infectious disease experts like Dr. Anthony Fauci, according to the Washington Post. The podcast ex ex episode, the podcast episode went viral and was shared tens of thousands of times on Spotify alone. Well, what does that tell you? They want to hear another side of the story. It probably doesn't have anything to do with other than the fact that they've been beaten the head on one side. It's time to change sides. In January, more than 200 medical professionals and science educators signed an open letter to Spotify. Yeah, they found out that the, a majority of those people were not in the medical profession. Um, some of them were just activists. That It was bullshit. <laughs> uh, condemning the platform for failing to act on vaccine mixed information. Hey man, they're a platform. They're not an editor. They're not a newspaper. They don't claim to be. They're protected under 230 and kudos to Spotify. It sounds to me like they haven't gone woke, which means actually after this, it, it wouldn't surprise me if he gets 11 million more because they're telling these establishment jerks to fuck off. 
let the people say what they want to say. It's up to the, the rest of the people that are listening whether or not they want to believe it or not. If you go around trying to cancel everybody that you don't believe in or that you don't agree with, there's not going to be anybody left. Eventually, there's not going to be anybody left. Especially in your life. Again, don't get me distracted. Young, who has more than 6 million followers on Spotify, whoop -de doo cited that Joe Rogan experienced tremendous influence as a source of concern in his letter. Rolling Stone reported, Spotify has a responsibility to mitigate the spread of misinformation on its platform, though the company presently has no misinformation policy, the singer wrote. Good. That's none of their business. It's not up to them, and it's not up to you to tell them that they need to do that. Who Again, who died and left you in charge of this? Well, it seems like after everything was said and done, and like I promised, the outcome became kind of a first in cancel culture. Old Neil to the establishment young managed to cancel himself, at least as far as Spotify is concerned. <laughs> uh, Spotify to remove Neil Young music after he demanded that they cancel Joe Rogan. Well, to me, this only proves two things, in my opinion. One, you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you get what you need. And Joe Rogan has become an uncancelable digital god. Sounds like Daryl Hannah, the actress turned activore, hooked herself alive one this time. Oh, well, not anymore, I guess. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. Thank you once again for being here. Don't forget, if you like my work, please give me a subscribe, a like, a share, a comment, and of course, a donation would be the ultimate. All my links are down below. Click on some of them, will ya? Also, don't forget the live call-in talk show, Talk To Me America, on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Time, 5 p.m. Avocado Time. The world wants to know what you have to say, so call me and tell them like it is. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time!